international societies that brought us all together here. Special thanks to uh, Hannah Wells for helping organize the event today. Uh, I have to start off with a disclaimer. Uh, what we're going to talk about, our, our most recent uh, project, has really nothing to do with my job here at the university. Uh, as indicated in the bio, I'm a manufacturing guy, manufacturing engineer, work in manufacturing engineering uh, department. So this is going to, uh, what we'll talk about today is some research we're doing, but it's more a uh, hobby or general interest for me, uh, and doesn't really concern the, the paycheck the university provides me to work here. Um, and I have a partner, Brian Nate, and I'm gonna turn over the, the program to him in, in just a minute, and he's gonna walk you through the slide uh, PowerPoint presentation. It's short, I think there's 12 or 13 slides. That'll take about 15 minutes. And then we have three different um, websites that we're going to go through and walk you through each of those. One's on the wind turbine, one is on the uh, plug-in hybrid uh, electric vehicle, and one is on the data acquisition system. And that should take us about an hour to four o'clock. And at the conclusion of that, we'll go outside and I have the car plugged in out front and we'll do a, a demonstration and answer more questions if you have any. So because it's such a large group, we'd like you to hold the questions until the end and we'll have a little uh, Q&A session. Uh, and with that, I'll turn over to Nate. I'll give you a little brief bio on Nate. He graduated from the Environmental Studies program here at, at Western. And he, he came to be about a year, um, not quite a year ago, uh, to start working on the project initially on the wind side and then uh, more recently on the plug-in hybrid side. Uh, he's currently a student out at KVCC uh, pursuing their wind energy uh, program. With that, uh, let me uh, welcome Nate to the podium. Please give him a warm welcome. Hello and welcome. Uh, thank you all for coming out on this nice day. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about our, just in general, uh, <laughs> what exactly a plug-in hybrid is, how it differs from uh, a standard Prius that you might buy from a Toyota dealership, um, the B2 Green program, which is uh, kind of like a, a power management add-on that we put onto the car, um, and show you some of the uh, charts and data that we found. So, okay, so what is the difference between a normal hybrid or a, between a normal hybrid vehicle and a PHEV? Now, normal hybrids are only able to be charged uh, internally. Now, that means that you can't plug in uh, a normal hybrid. Instead, uh, it has uh, regenerative braking, which means that when you apply pressure to brakes, uh, the battery takes some of that energy and uh, puts it back into the battery. Now, a plug-in hybrid and not only has that, but you can also plug it into just a standard uh, three-prong kind of wall outlet. Um, also, uh, the battery in a PHEV is substantially larger. It can hold more power. Now, the reason it needs to be able to hold more power is because you're running basically on pure energy. There's no uh, gas backup. The motor isn't working when the uh, battery is with the uh, exception of in the winter when you need to heat your car because it need the uh, heat needs to draw the heat from the battery. And uh, let's say you were getting on the expressway and you needed to accelerate a little bit quicker uh, and the motor would then again kick in during that. Um, however, the kind of the transitions between that are fairly seamless and they're also pretty short. So you wouldn't likely really notice unless you were really intently listening for it to begin with. All right, so some of our research. Uh, the goal of our uh, PHEV and wind turbine research project is to determine the feasibility of charging a PHEV using a small residential wind turbine. And it's really pretty well as simple as that. We want to know if you have a wind turbine, or if you already have a plug-in hybrid, and you put up a wind turbine, would you be able to supply your car uh, with all of its electrical needs from that wind turbine? Uh, another focus of the research project is to monitor how different driving conditions also affect the, uh, um, the performance of the vehicle. Now, temperature plays an important part because 
uh, batteries, they tend to get less efficient as it gets colder and less efficient as it gets too hot. Um, so seasonally, there is going to be somewhat of a driving impact. Uh, in the coldest days of winter, you're not going to get the same kind of energy efficiency or uh, that you're going to get when it's, you know, the dead of summer out. <coughs> uh, currently, the Toyota Prius used in our research uh, has a high motion A123 L5 plug-in conversion module battery. Um, <laughs> its uh, capacity is 5 kilowatt hours and uh, high motion estimates that it can travel up to 20 to 30 miles using only electricity and then 30 to 40 miles while in electric system mode. Now, we found that um, 20 to 30 miles is, is it's pretty accurate. It tends to fluctuate a little bit. Sometimes you get more than 30 miles, sometimes maybe a little less than 20. That's another instance where something, say, temperature could come into play or uh, just driving style. Um, using the information from high motion, we have determined that the PHEV should be able to achieve a maximum of eight, kilowatt, eight miles per kilowatt hour. This figure was determined by considering its maximum estimated driving range of 40 miles and its five kilowatt hour battery capacity. Simple division. Uh, based on our current data, we are averaging approximately 4.4 miles per kilowatt hour. Now, miles per kilowatt hour we found to uh, be dependent on a few things. Uh, the length of the trip uh, is the biggest factor. Um, temperature is also another large factor. And we'll get a little more into that later. Um, our, overall, our overall range is between three miles and five miles per kilowatt hour. 